Good afternoon, everybody. It's Josh Galacha here on Roto Curve with today's pitching picks. Obviously, last night was a great night for pitchers. We saw guys in the early slate like Johnny Cueto, Taiwan Walker put up great games. Jose Quintana had a nice game. Of course, Carlos Carrasco had that no hitter for eight and two thirds. The shame it was taken away from him, but he can't come back these points and over twenty fantasy points on uh, on Fanduel. So he had a great another great night, and we'll see if we can find some great pitchers for tonight's games. The first thing I want to mention for tonight is, is Max Scherzer pitches tonight. So one of the issues with him is his price. On DraftKings, he's 14500 and 12500 on FanDuel. That's almost too much to, to spend on for, for one guy, no matter how talented he is. And we talk about what we look for in value from pitchers. And, and for me, on using DraftKings prices, a guy that's 14500 I'm looking for three times value in turn. So I'm looking at, for Scherzer today, I'm looking at 43.5 points of return. Now, can he get that? Absolutely. One of the best pitchers in baseball, probably has the uh, most strikeouts per nine of late, and he's been on fire with a few games in a row, but taking a no-hitter into at least the fifth inning. But the problem is, if you take a guy that's that expensive, you have to find value bats in not two, not three, but maybe even four positions, and that severely limits your upside. Now, in, in cash game today, which I uh, avoid, will avoid playing tonight in just a seven-game slate, I think you might have to go with Scherzer and potentially find another cheaper pitcher. But staying away from him today in terms of our video, because obviously everybody knows that Scherzer is one of the better pitchers in the game and he's a suggested play. But we're going to need some other pitchers to fit in because we can't spend all of our money on him. The first guy I want to talk about is uh, Rowena Salias from the Mariners. Faces the Athletics today. Um, the A's are hitting just 240 against left-handed pitching this year. And the fact is that they have a lot of they had a lot of right-handed batters last year that could hit left-handed pitching. Obviously with Josh Donaldson, but he left and went to the Blue Jays. So there's there's a few players on that team that can hit left-handed pitching, like backup catcher Josh Fegley and Billy Butler. But the problem is, as a team collectively, they're not hitting well. They have one of the lowest isolated power numbers against left-handed pitching at just 118 so far this season. The only thing with the A's is they don't strike out much. But the problem is, in today's slate, there aren't many very good options. And, and Elias is one of the more talented pitchers on the day, with the uh, exception of Scherzer, of course. But the fact is that even though he, they don't strike out a lot of hitters and Elias isn't a big strikeout guy, he has the ability to go deeper into games and he has the ability to, to pick up a win, which is huge in, in uh, today's slate with the lack of talented pitchers at the top. The one reason why I like him is he possesses a very good changeup. It's actually the only pitch that he's thrown for a positive value uh, so far this season, which means that it's the only pitch he's had success with. Now, the A's will stack a lot of right-handed batters against him because that's the way they do things. They play the splits. They play guys that play against righties, left, righties only or lefties only. So they will have probably seven or eight right-handed bats in their lineup, especially with those switch hitters. So look for Elias to use that changeup a lot and use it in the beginning and early and in the middle of the count. So it gives him the ability to get out and if his changeup is on and he keeps it low, he's going to rack up some strikeouts as well. Another guy who's also this, a pitcher in that game as well, and, and that brings us to a point that I wanted to teach you guys about, is when you, when you pick two pitchers in the same game, if you would do that, and that's one of the guys I'm talking about talking about in Casimir, you don't necessarily want to do that in your cash games, in 50-50s and head-to-heads, because it limits your ability to get, um, to get a win, because obviously both pitchers can't get a win if they're pitching in the same game. But it's an interesting tactic in, in tournament play because you can have both of those guys, and chances are not a lot of people will do that. So regardless of their own percentage, even if they're both 20 to 30% owned, not many people will have both of them. So it makes your lineup a lot different. Let's get into why I like Kazmir today. Uh, he's 9,200 on DraftKings, 9,000 on FanDuel. So he's the most expensive pitcher with the exception of Scherzer. But the Mariners have struggled as an offense definitely all season long, but most of it's come against right handed pitching. They've actually hit left-handed pitching a lot better this year, which is a, a bit of an anomaly because last year they struggled mightily. Now they brought in Nelson Cruz. They brought in other guys that can hit right-handed pit or left-handed hitters or pitching. So, but the one issue with them is they're not really hitting the ball hard. Now, like they have a decent isolated power, but they're not getting. They're not hitting it um, to the gaps. It's either just a home run or they're flying out a lot. They have a low batting average against left-handed pitching, and and one of the issues that I have with them is. If they're not scoring a bunch of runs at once, they're not going to score often. And that's one reason why I like Kazmir today, especially since that game's in Oakland. Uh, Scott Kazmir at home this season has a 1.63 ERA and a whip of just 1.05, and he's yet to give up a home run. Now, knock on wood, I hope I didn't just jinx him, but 
it shows how successful he's been in, in the Oakland Coliseum so far this year. Uh, his, his upside is, is uh, noted, obviously. He's been a strikeout guy for quite a while, although not throwing too hard. But he's really safe as well for me because he has at least uh, six strikeouts in four straight games, and he has the highest ground ball rate of his career. And I want to talk about that because when pitchers are getting ground balls, it translates to outs. Now, the reason why Casimir is getting a lot of ground balls this year is because he's using his cutter and a changeup a lot more often than he has in, his, in the rest of his career. And the reason why that's a big thing is because that's two pitches that move away to a changeup moves away to a right-handed hitter, but it moves in, and then vice versa for lefties. It gives him some, this gives him the ability to pitch to both sides of the plate while having movement on either side. So these hitters against him always struggle with a cutter and they always struggle with a changeup. And Casimir has been throwing both along with a low 90s fastball. So it gives him three or four pitches to work deeper into games and potentially get some strikeouts. Now, those two guys are two rather expensive pitchers. And you may be asking, who do I pair with Scherzer? Is there a guy out there? The guy for me today is it's a very cheap option, and I'm only using him in tournaments. But like I said earlier, today's pretty much a GPP day only for me with a shorter slate. But it's Matt Boyd for the uh, Blue Jays pitches against the Red Sox. He's just $4,400 on DraftKings and $5,300 on FanDuel. But for two pitcher sites, that means you can pair him with Scherzer without spending that much combined on your pitchers. Uh, between the two of them, with 14-5 with Scherzer and 4-4 with uh, Matt Boyd, you can be below 19,000, which is a lot less than what I would spend normally on pitching on a, on a given slate. So it gives you the flexibility to put in hitters. Now, the reason why I like Boyd today, the Red Sox are terrible against left-handed pitching all year. They're hitting just 226. They're slugging just 360, and they have a weighted on base average of just 284. Um, Boyd was moderately successful in his first start, but he did give up three home runs. Now, that's something to watch, but the thing is with young pitchers, sometimes they leave, leave the ball over the plate, and that's what happens in the major leagues. They're the biggest mistake uh, catchers in the world, and that's how they hit those home runs. But uh, a little bit of a scouting report on Boyd real quick. He's a big left-handed pitcher. He usually uh, just works with fastball slider, but he does have a changeup and curveball. He throws a little bit as well. But the one thing about him is he really mixes up the speeds. He throws both of those pitches, fastball, slider. His slider's in the 80s, his fastball's in the low 90s. When he throws that curveball and changeup, there's a difference of 10 to 15 miles an hour, and that really keeps major league hitters off balance. You see you got younger pitchers changing speeds like that, it gives them the opportunity to get a lot of ground balls and, and they work deeper into games. Because when guys are locked in on just one pitch, they can hit it. But being able to use three or four pitches with different speeds really gives Boyd the ability to uh, get some outs and work deeper into games, which is something we're going to need to be able to find another pitcher to pair with Scherzer. He's worth taking as a value option today, and I am pairing him with Scherzer in my tournaments today. Uh, that basically wraps up our pitching segment for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow's edition.